Hello, today I will be showing you how to install the latest build of PCSX2. Alright, first we're going to go onto their official website. And then we're going to go over to the download section and go to development build. And we're going to go to the first one. That's the one that's the most current and click on download. Then we're going to go to this page and look the first one again, click download and it's going to be version 1.7.0. Once that is finished downloading, we are going to open and extract it. You can put it wherever you want. I'm going to put mine in the desktop. going to open that up and click the application and run through the install all right first we have language I'm going to keep it on default you can set it to whatever you want and then we're going to click next now all of these we're going to go through later and then click next I was going to ask for a BIOS. You can get a BIOS through the internet. Just, you know, PS2 BIOS. Go to the website and download it, and then you'll have it. For me, I'm going to use one of the older ones that I have. Down here. right here so once you've got your BIOS downloaded just select it you can copy it and put it in this new folder here where it says BIOS paste it in there come back over to here and refresh and I'm gonna use USA version 1.60 then click finish All right, now once that is done and out of the way, we are going to configure. Starting with emulation settings. Now, I've got presets safety on two, so for default, you can turn that off. What I recommend is keeping this the way it is right now under VUS, keep it the way that is. Under the GS, you can disable frame limiting. And you can put on frame skipping, but I don't recommend it. Under the GS window, you can have a standard or widescreen. And then the custom window size. Everything else, I pretty much leave default speed hacks. If your game's not running at 100%, you can move this on to the left or right, see if it helps. I keep the micro VU hacks on, uh, multi-threaded. It's good speed up if you have three or more cores. I'm gonna click. And that's it. Now game fixes, leave that the way it is. And for presets, it's on two for safety, but I'm gonna put it up to four for aggressive and leave it on that. And click apply, click okay. And then go over to the memory cards. Now, if you wanna change the location of where your games are gonna be saved, you can, you can create a new one and then put it wherever you want, or you can just leave it at default. For now, I'm just gonna leave it at default and click OK. And then the next plugin BIOS, we're gonna go to GS and click configure. Now for the render, I like to use Direct3D and choose whichever graphics card that you're currently using. I'm using RTX 2070. 
interlacing, I leave that on automatic for now. Texture filtering by linear PS2. Now, internal resolution. You can add it as native, like the way it was played originally, or you can bump up the resolution all the way up to 5K. But I'm going to put mine at 4K. Now, any traffic filtering, it's off by default, but I'm going to put that up to 16. The dithering, it's unscaled, and we're going to leave it unscaled. Mip mapping, we're going to leave. CRC hack level, we're going to leave. Data accuracy, we're going to leave that default. And blending accuracy, it's going to stay at basic. Also, you want to enable HW hacks. Now, for OSD configuration, uh, you can leave that alone. Shader configuration, you can leave that alone as well and then click OK. Now for the pad, that's the controller. We're going to click configure on that. What I'm using is a PS4 DualShock controller. And I'm also using this application, DS4 Windows, to make the computer think I'm using a Xbox controller. Now, under input APIs, we want to set it to direct input. Keep that checked, keep that checked, and that one also stays checked. Now I've got a pad one. We are going to remap all of these buttons to the buttons on this controller here. So, shoulder buttons. Oh, see? It already knows since it's a tricking the computer as a Xbox controller, the buttons are already mapped to an Xbox controller. So once that's good and done, just click apply, then click OK. And for USB, uh, we're not going to mess with that, just click OK on that. This one here, Dev9, again, not messing with that, just click OK on that. And then BIOS, folders. I'm gonna click OK and let's see what else is next. Audio settings. Audio settings, we're not changing anything too much. The volume's already at 100%. Latency is a 100 ms average. We're just gonna leave everything as default for now. Now, for video, we're leaving everything default. Controllers, we already went through that and that should be everything for uh, settings now to actually start the game okay next we're gonna click on boot ISO that's how you start your games you can find uh, PS2 games by searching in Google put the title and then put ISO right afterwards click search and you should be able to find whatever game you're looking for Before we do that, we're going to go to C DVD and then ISO selector to select what game we're going to play. Now, as you can see, I have all these games right now. If you want um, Ratchet, just go on Google, type in Ratchet, and then afterwards type ISO and then hit enter to search. You should be able to find uh, the download file. So yeah, we're going to go with uh, Ratchet. All right, it's saying fast boot, so we're gonna go to PCSX2 and then click boot ISO. I'm gonna make sure that the volume's not that loud. Okay, that should be good. Let's download a little bit more. All right, if you want a full screen, just double click and you should be on full screen. All right, so you can see it's working with the buttons that we remapped. 
All right, memory card is unformatted. Do we want to format? Yes. No save data. Would you like to create? Yes. All right, difficulty. Couch potato, contestant, gladiator, hero. I'll go with contestant for now. And there is also a 60 FPS counter at the upper right. Unless you know that the game is running at 100%. I'm going to skip through the cutscenes. We must calibrate your battle suit's targeting matrix. First, look over at the hollow target on your left. Turn to face the hollow target on the right, then fire. Good. Now shoot the hollow target above you. All right, Ratchet. Your movement circuit should be in working order now. Try getting to the top of that ledge. I am transmitting a digital minimap representation of the area. Can you see it? The minimap will show you the positions of nearby enemies. I am reading three more hollow targets in your vicinity. Good, Ratchet. There should be a teleporter nearby that will take you to the next stage of the qualification course. All right, so far the game's running without any hiccups. And it's on set with 4K resolution, too. Greetings, hero, and welcome to Dreadzone. Ratchet, I have figured out a way to get information to you without Vox knowing. Pay attention to secret messages at the bottom of your screen. At the top of your screen is the experience bar. As you destroy enemies, you gain experience. When the bar is full, you will gain a level, and your nanotech will increase. Yeah, so far the game's running pretty good. end the video right there if you like this tutorial please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this comment below what you'd like to see next and thank you for following me through this tutorial